Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition where I'm still sad. <laughs> and mostly about, uh, it's mostly the, the, I guess kind of spoilers, but Gabby and Ken. Um, I'm, a, I'm mostly sad about that. I'm a monster. <laughs> Uh, that's that is anyway what it's what I going to be sad about in the future. But for now, I am I need to focus, and I'm just gonna do some resource gathering off screen for a bit because I need to level things up. I am not not even close. And it'll be it'll be kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever played Mass Effect 3 with this particular like outcome. And like I said, I'm not willing to risk. Um, I'm not willing to risk the worst outcome, which is uh, losing the people that are closer to me. But I'm still sad about still sad about the crew. Rip the crew. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but I'm gonna try to do my best to do everything else as as best as possible. Hopefully the, the suicide mission should go well. I usually do that pretty well. Although one time, oh man, I guess that's kind of spoilery. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little bit of spoilers. One time I did lose a Morden. Which was actually, I think, for my. So I played through once with a male ship uh, because he was on the box art, and I was like, mm, okay, I'm gonna play the box art guy, you know? And then I was a fool because I think I said this before, but then I saw Thane in Mass Effect 2, and I was like, oh boy. Um, and so uh, I did end up starting Mass Effect 3 with that male shepherd, um, but I did not get. I got to like Mars, which is like the second mission. Um, and. I was like, no, oh, I don't want to do this. You know, I didn't, I don't even think I got to Mars. I didn't even get to Mars with him. I got to Palavin, no, Palavin's moon, whatever Palavin's moon is named. Um, because I remember I was trying out um, Infiltrator, the sniper, the stealth sniper. And there's a particular fight sequence where like, you're just thrown into the ringer. And there's like nowhere like I, the game isn't really optimized for a sniper like configuration like there's not a ton of like high ground options not a ton of sneak options you know like it's just not at least in my opinion from what i experienced it wasn't great um so i ended up just being like you know what that combined with the fact that i really wanted to not play mass effect 3 without having rom without romancing thing made me go all the way back and start over and so then i played through um my female shepherd and i played through one and two and then i recorded three so i played three like 98 percent blind for youtube and that was my first youtube series um again i think i've probably said this all before and everyone's like going to sleep but um where was i going with that i did have a reason to be saying those things um let me maybe find this system. Let's do this one. Um, anyway, so that was my canon run that I hadn't really seen. That nobody else had really seen Mass Effect 1 and 2 for. Um, except for me. Um, but then I decided I would play through my canon run, but with Mass Effect 1 and 2. Um, so that people could kind of see the decisions that I had made that led up to that Mass Effect 3 save. Um, but what ended up happening on that one is I... Because the first time through, I did the suicide mission perfectly. And I did the whole game perfectly because I did everything. I saved, like, the main missions and stuff to, like, the very end. Like, I did what I usually do, which is where I save things. Like, I don't do main missions until I've completed almost everything else that I can. Um, and so I did that, and I did the suicide mission just great without knowing that, that apparently that was fairly difficult to do back then. <laughs> and then, uh, so I wasn't worried about it in Mass Effect, uh, the second, second time playing, or I guess the third time playing Mass Effect 2. Because even with my mail ship, I hadn't, I hadn't messed up. Like, I'd done everything just fine. Um, and then in that, like, third time through, the second time through with my cannon ship, um, I lost Morden. Still, 
I have theories as to why, and I'll go more into it when we start, like, actually going into the suicide mission, and I have, like, the graphics, the, I have the graphic ready, saved on my computer, that kind of explains how the, the suicide mission works, um, which I've already kind of picked up after playing it several times, but, like, I just want to be able to have a visual for it, um, to show on screen, but, um, yeah, so I kind of know what I did wrong. I'm pretty sure, um, but it but it surprised me, and I was I was quite shocked. Um, but apparently, losing Morden is not difficult because he has like the lowest health and like the lowest survivability. Because I lost him at the very end of the mission. Like it wasn't like I lost him because I didn't upgrade anything. Like I did everything I thought perfectly, and then and every, everybody's missions, everything, and then I lost him. But it was interesting in Mass Effect Three playing without him um, because. Um, his replacement, because they, they do have these, like, sort of, like, like NPC replacements for these characters that feature fairly importantly in Mass Effect 3. Um, and meeting his replacement was actually very interesting. He was a man who was very, like, a Solarian, who, a uh, man who was very different to Morden, but very similar in a lot of ways, and I actually really enjoyed his character. Um, a lot. And he... I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but, like, he had a lot of, like, really, like... It feels cheesy to say, but, like, deep things to say about, like, um, the nature of, like, you know, self and, like, sacrifice and, like, scientific progress and, like, religious, like, spiritual belief, you know? And so it was... I had a lot of really good conversations with him, um, and I'm pretty sure... There, there are replacements. I actually should look it up. I should look up the other replacements. Um, I looked it up a long time ago, um, but I don't remember it anymore. Um, like, who gets their replacements, but... Anyway, that was intriguing. I guess the moral of this very, very long story is that it was intriguing to me to have an outcome that I hadn't anticipated lead to a situation that was quite interesting and I feel like beneficial for my game overall and like for my my, my perspective on this game overall. Um, I'm not saying that's going to happen. What do I need to do here? Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen with this because um, this outcome that is going to happen now is not uh, Ma'at, it's Egyptian. Um, it's like uh, fate, or like the balancing, or something, I think, something like that. Uh, oh shoot. It is believed to have captured all other body to its name, Devourer, cool. The Geth, yeah, so I'm out here, and I should have maybe mentioned that. The Far Rim is where the Geth kind of hang out. <laughs> so I maybe shouldn't be out here, but here I am. Um, anyway, the, the losses that I will experience that I'm aware of in Mass Effect 3 aren't going to lead to as big a changes as the ones that I did by accidentally losing more than that one time, um, but still. It's just, sometimes if you follow, like, even a sad course of action through to it, like, or what seems like, you know, a less than ideal situation through to its end. Sometimes it can lead to little diamonds in the rough. Not that it's gonna happen this time. But, you yeah, know. I make do. I think that was where I was going with that. Anyway, I'm sorry you guys had to watch, like, what, eight minutes of mining? Hopefully those of you who are into astronomy got to read the planet descriptions, because I didn't. <laughs> I just in general I hope I get my points across without being overly redundant. That was a big problem I had in college. Alliance building, yeah, they've been encountered here. Uh, that was a big problem I had in college. Uh, I was overly redundant in my papers, and like I had a professor, and I'm, I've probably said this before, so I'm being redundant again. But I had a professor that was like, it's a sign of intel. Like he was a like my advisor for my bachelor's thesis because I was in the honors program and in the integrated studies program, both of which required you to do a senior thesis for your bachelor's. Um, so he was my advisor for that, and he was, when he was reading my paper, as it was, like, forming, he was like, I see that you kind of, you know, you say the same thing, but three different ways, and he's like, and that's actually, you know, and I'm like, yes, I know, I'm sorry, like, I, you know, and I didn't really see it that way, but I kind of, I did, like, I knew I was doing that, but I was like, I just want to get the point across, you know, and like, specific you know it makes sure that it, it comes across to everybody and he's like he's like no he's like i he's like i understand why you're doing it he's like it's actually a sign of um, of fairly high intelligence intelligence um 
because it means that you're like, I, I don't know, it was something like, you know, like you can, like y you are approaching these topics that you're bringing up from multiple um, perspectives, you know, and trying to make sure your point is getting across. And I didn't believe him and I still don't believe him. <laughs> I think it's mostly like I don't know it was just me being overly redundant like I get like yes I was trying to like come at it from different perspectives but saying the same thing three different times is why my paper was like 72 pages long instead of like a reasonable like 30 honestly like or less like 25 like it was too long it was too long and I still am like upset that it was so long I even had a professional editor come and edit it with me and we like tried to rip it apart um, and it still was 72 pages. Oh, anyway. I'm so sorry. I'm just rambling today. I guess I'll be the first to say I will go back and redo things I did in Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, because specifically, there were other reasons. But Solus was upset with me when I conscripted the Wardens in Dragon Age Inquisition. And I was, like, so worried. Because for one thing, like, yes, it was Solus and I was romancing him and I loved him and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to you know, him to be happy with me. I didn't want him to be upset with me, but I was also extremely concerned because to me, he was like the pinnacle of like wisdom. And like, he, like, I respected his decisions a lot. Like, and we were usually on the same page. And so when we weren't for that instance, I thought I was, I was like, I've done something very wrong. Not just because, oh, my boyfriend's unhappy with me, but because I was like, usually we're on the same page. And usually he knows more than I do. Like, I, I, I greatly respect his like, you know, his wisdom on most matters. And so I was like, I've obviously done something wrong. So I went back and I did this whole like intro on the video where I was just like, I know I wasn't, you know, like, I know I made this decision, you know, and I should just stick with it. But like, and I gave all these reasons. And, you know, one of them, two of them were, you know, I was like, I respect Solus and I consider him very wise and like, I usually try to follow his you know like guidance because i trust his opinion um but also i did say i was like also i do i do like him and i don't want to have to worry about the you know the, the di not the dis disregard but the displeasing his displeasement that's not a word um but yeah people were like it's not that big a deal but okay i was like okay so like i do i definitely save scum and I've done it before in Mass Effect, and I've done it before in Dragon Age for things. But there were some things, like in Dragon Age 2, where I, you know, spoilers, I guess a little for Dragon Age 2, I brought Bethany down into um, the Act launched. 2 finale? No, Act 1 finale. Um, where you go into the deep Launching roads. Um, and luckily, I brought... At least luckily for me, I brought Anders with me too. I had no idea going into Dragon Age 2 that, the, that bringing my sister down would be a bad idea, but that bringing Anders along was the only way to mitigate the worst thing that could have happened, you know? Uh, I just, I liked Anders, I was romancing him, and also he was my healer. And I was like, I'm not gonna go down into the dark, and also he was a warden. I was like, I'm not gonna go down to the dark spawner without the warden guy. And he's the one who got us the maps. So I was like, obviously I'll bring him, and obviously I'll bring my sister, because we've been inseparable, you know? And like, you know, I was a warrior, and she was a, she was a mage. You know, she was a more combat-oriented mage than I had specced Anders. Um, anyway, what happens with her is something that she doesn't particularly like, and so that was an interesting thing that I had to deal with, was, um, my sister's sort of resentment. Um, <laughs> Russian for there's nothing here, I remember this planet, yes. Now draw small tourist crowds. <laughs> um. Anyway, so following that, like, uh, sort of unhappy outcome through led to a lot of really interesting, like, dynamics, at least in my head, not necessarily in the game, but, like, imagining how my hawk felt and, like, how she interacted with her sister after that um, was really, really interesting to me. Um, but if I wanted it to be, like, potentially perfect, although, truly, if you leave your sister behind, like, other things happen, you know? Um, but it's an outcome that she prefers and in the end, even though she, like, wants to come along with you, and your mother's like, please don't take both of you along, and I'm like, Mom, it'll be fine. And I should have known. I had no idea. I had no idea. I, I did not think the game would be so cruel as to potentially take your sibling away at the end of Act 1. Uh... 
Take your sibling away. Well, take your sibling away regardless, because even if you leave her behind, um, other things happen that get her, at least she's removed from you, but she's not necessarily, like, removed from the game entirely. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway. Experiencing that made me think that, you know, maybe I shouldn't save scum all the time. But I am, I'm a, I'm a major save scummer in a lot of ways because, you know what, it's my game, right? I can play it how I want. <laughs> and if I want to have the perfect happy outcome, I can. Um, but now I'm old and I have a demanding job and I <laughs> just don't have the time. Maybe if I had started earlier in the week, but even then, like, I don't particularly want to. I don't particularly want to replay all that. And like I said before, I don't particularly want to have the issue with um, having Legion on the ship and then all of a sudden not having him. Like, the, the, the discontinuity is upsetting to me for, like, video uploads. Mm-hmm. Anyway, wow. Maybe I'll edit out most of this. <laughs> Who knows? Ooh, this is interesting. Okay, you know, I'm with the first place human explorer. There's also an anomaly detected here, so we're gonna scan and find it. So the first place human explorers discovered a dedicated Perothean burial ground. While a few sites were saved for posterity, Edfell Ashland Mining successfully lobbied to scout the rest of the planet, planet for Element Zero, and soon was embroiled in a scandal. Mining teams were looting grave sites, searching for Ezo and other treasures, and many got rich off the so-called cemetery business. I'm gonna lose my mind. While EAM officially brought, the stop, brought it to stop to the looting, as mining teams ran on the planet, prospecting the unclaimed territory. Yeah, and armed conflicts had taken, broken out between miners and scientists, taking claims on Perthian ruins. I can't believe that the, um, this is actually something that I'm pretty sure that the, uh, council would get involved in and put a stop to, let alone the, um, Hanar, because Prothean runes are sacred to them. Um, but yeah, there's no way the council would just let humans run around looting Prothean, Prothean ruins, like, the people that they thought were, like, the precursor, not like a precursor race necessarily, but, like, the race that came before and gave them so much technology, there's no way they would let them loot the burial sites. Like, and you're darn tootin' I'd be down there with a gun as a scientist, like, <laughs> freaking, like, chasing off miners. Like... Absolutely not. Like you get what this you get to get rich quick scheme, looting from cultures that aren't even yours that belong to everybody, essentially. You know, the knowledge that can be gained from these from these places belong to everybody, you know? And to have like these like just upstarts come in and like with zero respect just tear things up. You, all they get, you lose provenience, right? Like you lose context for what these artifacts are. It's like, ooh, it's a Prothean ruin, like grave burial good. Okay, cool. It doesn't mean anything. You know, like without context of the things around it and like, you know, where and when it was found, you know, like you don't you don't learn anything from it. It's an entire like treasure trove of knowledge that's being like burned out, essentially. There's no way the council would let that happen. Surface scan show evidence of a shipwreck beating quarry and design specifications. Identity of ship unknown. Number of life signs dig nearby unknown. Local wildlife may interfere with accuracy of biological scan. Investigate the quarry and crash. You know what? We'll do that. That's something to do once I finish getting the resources from here. I'm pretty sure it's a geth trap. Um, but I could be wrong. I don't remember every single quest or mission in this game. launched. But in the previous game, stuff like this wasn't quarrying though. It was just like sometimes like crash sites were geth traps. This also might- I feel like we've already encountered the one where, like, there's a Prothean ruin. And, like, Shepard, like, gets to interact with the Prothean device? I feel like we've already done that. But there is one where you can do that. If we haven't done it, this might be that one. Oh, dang, I'm all out of probes. Oh, well. Can I not land without a probe? Land. Okay, here we go. His outfit does nothing much. We are gonna bring Legion because we have sacrificed much to have Legion, so he is gonna come with us on a bunch of these. Also, if this is a Geth trap, it'll be interesting to get his opinion on it. Oh, uh, let's see. 
I haven't seen Thane in a long time. This is a double sniper squad. Not necessarily the best, but you know what? Don't care. <laughs> Let's see, throw. I don't have throw, so you can have throw upgraded. Perfect. Shepard, I want my missile launcher. Yep. Legion has the. I don't want to. I need to look it up actually if the collector assault rifle. I don't like the Matic, I know that much. I think I'll give him the Vindicator. Okay. Oh, hello, Varen. <laughs> bringing tally for this. I'm, I'm an idiot. I wasn't sure if she'd say something there. Uh, but yes, of course I'm gonna bring freaking tally for this. Also bringing tally and legion is hilarious and terrible. Uh, we managed to escape the death notice thanks to some clever work, but the strain on the old ship was too much. I'm afraid we might never see the fleet again. Landing was rough. We managed to survive. Unfortunately, Commander Corlott didn't make it. We've scattered the landscape. Don't know who or what's taking them. We've now lost more than half the crew who survived the crash. We hope to build a camp here to survive until the Adina found our beacon, but something's hunting us. I have to keep the crew together as best I can. We will send out a search party when the day comes. I will find my crew and we will do whatever it takes to return to the Idina. Okay, so it's not a trap. It's just a horror story. They're slowly being hunted. Also, is this planet not cool? Holy cow! Oh no, oh, freak. I'm looking up at the sky. Oh my gosh. Orion life signs are stabilized. I recommend securing the area in preparation for shuttle extraction. It wasn't just Varen fighting you guys, right? Incoming hostile. Where? Where? Let's see if I remember how to do this. Oh, cool beans. Okay. Oh, they have the same abilities. I keep hitting those explosives, which is working out very well. Oh, you're dead. Okay. Uh, I can't. One down. Hit it very well from afar. That was a very short planet side mission. Ha ha! Take that you stupid dog! <laughs> Kick you in the teeth. That dog was like. What's he? Tally here, who still hasn't gone to do her exile mission. That was very short. I did not expect it to be that short. I mean, I vaguely recall that mission, but interesting. Uh, 
to visit my sincere appreciation for your efforts in locating the wreckage of the Sinai, the ship is storied history of both the migrant free fleet and Cerberus. Oh, she the one that was involved in that, I think the third book. You returned to the flotilla one of our newest and most honored heroes. Your efforts in furthering the form and search for a new homeworld will be remembered. You're welcome. Oh, wow. And that is why I like to run around exploring all the planets because you get, you get usually they're a little longer than that, but you get nice little side missions. And I enjoy like it's the only time you get to really land planet side. I mean, like besides like the main missions, right? Like you can't just like land like you could in Mass Effect One, so you have to find the planets that are landable. Now I okay. I'm just gonna keep looking around. <laughs> I have detected an anomaly. Another anomaly. Desert of Wash potassium salts. Oh, it's a criminal staging base. Oh, and this is a this is also a place where um, this system is like a planet, a prison planet system. So that's cool. Okay. It seems like something somebody wouldn't. I have found something. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if this is part of a DLC that I have not. that I don't know. <laughs> Probe launched. I vaguely recall something about a mech. But usually, next come with heavy fighting. Launching probe. I forget that Zaid's also a sniper. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I just saw that. I'm detecting a large supply of resources buried deep within the canyon walls. Heavy explosives will be required to excavate them. How exciting. Useless heap of crap. Now I won't even move. Bummer. Let's see. I feel like I get to fight some people in this thing too. gotta throw oh no I don't get to fight I just gotta I just gotta make sure oh, I don't have any more do I oh okay I didn't realize these were all some mining mechs oh jeez Why are you firing behind you? No wonder it freaking runs out of power. It's just shooting at things randomly. I'm trying to find a battery. Or did I get too far away from it? I only have got Oh, it's over here. I guess it's good to know that it'll die right next to the power cells. I was looking further ahead. My name is Minor Shepherd now. That's all I do. My crew's gone, so I lose myself in the mining. Look at 
started. Just having a hard time. Riveting gameplay, truly. I was like, you gonna do anything? Defense systems active. That's like the most inefficient mining thing. Like, just using bullets to mine, that feels very inefficient. Oh no. Oh my. Oh, ow! Jeez! Did Legion just say goodbye, or <laughs> did the machine just say goodbye? What is this? I feel like I could have gotten this how I usually get resources, which is via my ship throwing, you know, pods down. But I'm gonna take this moment to level up my stuff. Not that you guys will have to suffer through it. Don't worry. Those were two very short missions. I need to go buy some more of these, um, like the medical capacity, damage protection, tech damage. So then I can get these modules. But I upgraded everything else that I could. SMG extra rounds, I think assault rifle, something or other. Got the med bay upgrade. Sniper headshots, not that that matters. Because my people don't do headshots as far as I know. Um, but I leveled up what I could. So... I don't have a ton of money. Uh, I think I'll take a break from this for now. I should probably go back to the Citadel at some point and buy some, buy some of those upgrades, but um, for now, I'm gonna be done. Hopefully this video wasn't too incredibly boring. Uh, it was just me chatting and then two small missions, so um, I hope it's good. <laughs> So thank you all for putting up with me. This ne the next one we'll do will be Kazumi's mission. I just got distracted with the talking during the the mining. So I feel like it was kind of weird to start a Kasumi mission after that. But we will finally start Kasumi's mission next time. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Look, like I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Kalito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And Christopher, my tree tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it and I hope you're enjoying the game. So yeah, I'll see you all later and I hope to see you in the next one. <laughs>